of the Savior's ability to heal and lighten burdens. Elder Tad R. Callister has taught, quote, One of the blessings of the Atonement is that we can receive of the Savior's suckering powers. Isaiah spoke repeatedly of the Lord's healing, calming influence. He testified that the Savior was a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat. To those who sorrow, Isaiah declared that he, the Savior possessed the power to comfort all that mourn and wipe away tears from off all faces, revive the spirit of the humble, and bind up the brokenhearted. So expansive was his suckering powers that he could exchange beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Oh, what hope source in those promises! His spirit heals, it refines, it comforts, it breathes new life into hopeless hearts. He has the power to transform all that is ugly and vicious and worthless in life to something of supreme and glorious splendor. He has the power to convert the ashes of mortality to the beauties of eternity. Close quote. I testify that Jesus Christ is our loving Savior, Redeemer, the Master Healer, and faithful friend. If we turn to Him, He will heal us and make us whole again. I testify this is His church, and He is preparing to return once again to reign with power and glory on this earth. Hi, this is Ben Peterson with our last daily scripture highlight from a chapters 13 through 39 of Isaiah. As a prophet of God, Isaiah prophesied about the events that would unfold hundreds of years and even thousands of years after his own lifetime. This week, we've had the opportunity to highlight his prophecies about the last days, from apostasy to restoration, from living as a Latter-day Saint during the 21st century, to the destruction that awaits the wicked at the last day. And today, we get to highlight one of the most hopeful messages of all, the blessings that await God's covenant-keeping children. The hymn, Hope of Israel, describes the battle Latter-day Saints will fight in the last days as we battle evil and win victory with Jesus Christ. The hymn says, Hope of Israel, Zion's army, children of the promised day, see the chieftain signals onward and the battles in array. See the foe in countless numbers, marshaled in the ranks of sin. Hope of Israel, on to battle, now the victory we must win. Strike for Zion, down with error, flash the sword above the foe, every stroke disarms a foeman, every step we conquering go. Soon the battle will be over, every foe of truth be down. Onward, onward, youth of Zion, thy reward the victor's crown. Hope of Israel, rise in might, with the sword of truth and right. Sound the war cry, watch and pray, vanquish every foe today. In chapter 24, Isaiah prophesied that when the harvest and destruction are about over, the righteous who remain, who have abided the destruction of the wicked, will sing joyful praises to the Lord. With all the devastating destruction of the wicked all around them, you might wonder why they would be joyful. If you do, think about how deeply you hope for Christ to return to the earth. As the earth increases in chaotic divisiveness and pleasure-seeking, an anything-goes mentality will become more and more commonplace. Sin and evil will be promoted and respected, while God and His holy ways will be made to appear undesirable and even evil. In a world like that, think about how desperately you and all righteous people will have been praying for an end to it all, an end to the persecution, and an end to the confusion and conflict, an end to suffering, sin, and temptation. When you look at the future and what you anticipate looking ahead is worse than where you are today, you can become very discouraged. However, when you look ahead to better days than where you stand right now, that brings real hope and excitement for the future. And in the midst of the truth that those who do wickedly will be destroyed in turmoil and chaos, our loving Heavenly Father and Savior are giving the righteous so much to hope for and look forward to. 
we can have our hope riveted in Jesus Christ and our testimony that he will come again, that he will cleanse the earth of wickedness, that he will bring relief and justice to the righteous. We will rejoice at that day. And we can rejoice now and every day as we anticipate the glorious manifestations of his love for his faithful children. Thinking of what God has prepared for us, I can't imagine the immense joy that can and will fill our hearts. We can feel a sense of that joy when we joyfully serve the Lord, when we stand in holy places and when we faithfully and joyfully keep our covenants to serve and follow him, to obey, to sacrifice, and to live his gospel. We can be filled with his joyful anticipation and love when we live to keep our bodies, minds, and spirits pure as we get closer and closer to giving our whole selves to our spouse and to the Lord with fierce loyalty and complete fidelity in every sense of the word. In the Doctrine and Covenants, section 76, the Lord promised, For by my Spirit will I enlighten them, and by my power will I make known unto them the secrets of my will, yea, even those things which I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor yet entered into the heart of man. Life might be hard today, but as we yoke and bind ourselves to the Savior of the world, we can begin to see things through His eyes. We will see how our challenges are making us stronger. We'll see more purpose and joy in reaching out to others, even when we might be in need of ministering ourselves, knowing that when we minister to God's children, He will minister to us. When we have the Lord's perspective, the haze that seems to cover the eyes of the world begins to dissipate. What the world professes as right becomes clearly wrong through sanctified eyes, and the eternal truths of God ridiculed by popular vote and scorned on nearly every social media platform become everlastingly clear. When the Savior comes, we will be freed from all sin. Isaiah 25 is a hymn of praise. O Lord, Thou art my God, I will exalt Thee, I will praise Thy name, for Thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. For thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, when the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. Isaiah speaks of the Lord as being a strength and a refuge, a shadow from the heat. When you think of what God has done for you, what words might describe the Lord in your mind? Has he been your truth in a world of confusion and half-truths? Has he been your source of light when life seemed to get dark? How has he been your compass? How has he been your joy? Isaiah said he will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord hath spoken it. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For in this mountain shall the hand of the Lord rest. When we figuratively approach the sacrament table, or altar, each Sunday, while the emblems of Christ's body and blood are passed, and as we take inside ourselves that small swallow of water and the broken piece of bread, we covenant that we're willing to take upon us the name of the Lord, willing to follow Him, willing to keep His commandments, willing to always, always remember Him. If we keep that covenant and remain willing every day to live true to our word and repent when we fall short, we can be filled with the Holy Ghost and given the strength we need to endure one more day and just one more week. And if we repeat that iterative process, receiving His Spirit by keeping our covenants, we will, through the Holy Ghost, receive the power of Jesus Christ to overcome this world. No matter how long our journey may seem and feel, our trials will be but a small moment, and at the end of the covenant path, we'll find the Lord waiting for us there to welcome us in in an eternal and loving embrace. I hope you felt the influence of the Holy Ghost during our scripture highlights this week. If you're enjoying these daily gospel messages, please share them with others. Allow the light of the gospel and these true messages of hope bring joy to others. Hopefully these messages help you as you spend personal time in the scriptures, or maybe they've been helpful as you prepare lessons or engage in gospel conversations with your ministering brothers or sisters, with your family, or with other friends. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I hope you have a peaceful Sabbath day this weekend. Prepare now for the sacrament ordinance and be intentional about the way you remember and keep your covenants. I love you and so does the Lord. He has so much in store for us to look forward to. We're part of the greatest work taking place on the earth. Never forget that and never forget Him.